Now we are joined by um, the, the founders of Group Gnosis, which is a prediction market built on Ethereum. So uh, we are joined by Stefan Thomas and Stefan George. Stefan George and Martin Kopelman. So first, we would like to have your introductions, starting with Martin. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm Martin. Um, quite quite a while into um, prediction markets, and now working on Gnosis. Yeah. Yeah, we um, like a couple of years ago, we started to build uh, a prediction market, betting market uh, named Fairlay.com. Mm -hmm. And then like the beginning of this year, we started then to focus on Ethereum and yeah, built the initial version of Group Gnosis, which is already live. You can try it out. So uh, my first question is, um, we've had prediction markets for the last 10 or 15 years and all of them have been centralized and now with ethereum the possibility of a censorship resistant distributed prediction market opens up mm -hmm. why do you think this is an important idea at all why do you think that going from centralized to a censorship resistant prediction market will open up new markets um i think i think the censor resistant is is obviously that's that's one big thing but um it's 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 already um, important on other levels. So, uh, for example, with with Gnosis, uh, with with Fairlay, we centrally keep the money, and that means first of all, it's unnecessary cost for us. It's it's uh, it's cost to um, to have secure storage of um, of bitcoins. And with Ethereum, we can use the, the, the security built-in into Ethereum. So that's directly from a from a um, from our perspective or from a perspective of the prediction market that's superior. Um, and on the other hand, um, for the user, obviously, it's it's better to to trust a, or hopefully trust a, a, um, a contract instead of instead of a company. Do you have your views on it? Um, of course, the uh, censorship is also a problem for prediction markets. As you said, they are strongly regulated. And so, of course, in all countries where there's strong regulation, it potentially opens up a new market because it runs in a decentralized manner. No one can really censor it. And yeah, I think those are the two main advantages that Ethereum has in the context of prediction markets. So, uh, in the in the prediction market space, especially on Ethereum, um, Augur had a lot of publicity because they raised a lot of money selling rep. Can you summarize what the difference between Group Gnosis and, and Augur is from an architectural standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, our goal is kind of to be the um, what worked what, what WordPress is for blocks. That that's what we want to be for prediction markets. So we do not necessarily want to run a specific prediction market uh, ourselves. We want to provide tools and a framework for anyone to create a prediction market with a, with a few clicks. So the final goal would be to, if you're interested in a specific topic, let's say what the uh, what what's happening in, in a TV show or what's what's um, uh, some what 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 are the ne um, the next um, uh, Supreme Court decisions or whatever whatever your niche is it should be as simple as starting a block it should be as simple uh, to start a prediction market and that's um, why we or that's what we plan with Gnosis Augur um, they did a lot of work in this um, for this decentralized oracle and I think that that's a good idea but. We uh, want to have a flexible model for oracles. So, uh, in our architecture, you can just choose one oracle that could be a decentralized one, like Oracle, uh, like Augur, but it could also be a centralized oracle or uh, a multi-thick thing, or yeah, all kinds of possible oracles. Or just uh, um, if the if the if the um, data comes directly from the blockchain, then you don't need a oracle, or the oracle is very simple. It's a simple contract that just pulls data from the blockchain. Mm -hmm. I think from an architectural point of view, the main difference is that we really try to be a platform, a modular platform, 
where anyone can sign up and become an oracle and anyone can provide this information. And not only oracles, but also market makers um, and also tokens. So you can use any kind of tokens. You don't have to use Ether. You can use any kind of tokens. You can create your own token. Uh, I just recently spoke with someone. He asked me, oh, can you use colored coins? Can you use uh, coins specifically for specific people? And I said, oh, we haven't implemented this, but you can use any kind of coin that you like because our platform allows this. So I think that's the main point that we create software where other people can easily uh, yeah, extend our platform and uh, yeah, make it like they want it. So, so to summarize, would it be right to say that Augur by selling all of these reps is uh, promoting a specific type of Oracle in which people who hold the reps are the actual people who put the data in and are responsible for the accuracy of the data. Group Gnosis on the other side is saying that the design of the Oracle should not be specified by the prediction market and, uh, and it should be swappable. So if somebody wants a centralized Oracle, swap it in. If somebody wants an Oracle like Augur, swap that in. If there's a third model that comes up, like shelling point Oracle or whatever, right. uh, then swap, uh, sw swap that in. So you are really trying to make the Oracle modular. Right, yeah, that's a good summar summary. Yeah. And also maybe as addition, we think that um, there should be like a two-step process. And uh, this process is first, um, as you said, anyone can uh, decide what should be the Oracle. And the easiest way, of course, the easiest implementation of an Oracle is a centralized one where one third party gives this information. And it's also the cheapest one. And um, like in the two-step oracle, we would say then if this oracle provides any uh, malicious information, uh, any wrong information, then there's the possibility for users to challenge this oracle and then maybe swap it for an oracle which is more sophisticated, like the one that Augur provides or other approaches that we have already uh, thought about and implemented. Um, something that we call the ultimate oracle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so basically you could have a centralized oracle and then uh, if there's a dispute, then you could, uh, the augurs oracle could resolve the dispute for you. It, um, it, that's just another form of an oracle. So, yeah. so uh, you can, I mean, in the oracle, you can specify that that's only one step and that's centralized or that's only one step and it's decentralized, but you can also specify an oracle that takes first to centralized Oracle and then has the option to, of some dispute mechanism and then calling. Uh, I, I think that's just an example why it makes sense to make it flexible, the, the Oracle. So what is the ultimate Oracle then? Yeah, the ultimate Oracle is an idea that Martin came up with. So, so could, um, that, that will take a little bit longer, but uh, I mean, so um, the idea is an oracle is as secure as, um, or it's it's equally secure to the amount of money kind of that's at stake. If it's a centralized oracle, then, for, for example, the the, rep, the rep, reputation of this person is at stake. With Augur, for example, all rep tokens are at stake. Um, the ultimate oracle has the idea that all ether is at stake, and um, basically. Um, the um, simple description is, if there's a dispute, so let's say, was Barack Obama elected in 2012 uh, 2000 or eight or whatever? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes or no, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, then you, you, yeah, you have the two possible outcomes, and, um, and uh, voting for one outcome would just be um, sending ether um, to, to, to this outcome. And in the end, um, the outcome is chosen uh, where people send more Ether to. And, uh, and as an incentive, the, the Ether that's sent to the other outcome, that's distributed to those um, who picked the one that um, where m more people send Ether to. So now you could ask, okay, from a game theoretic uh, perspective, that's a, a, sym a symmetric game. Uh, from 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 the mechanics of this game, it doesn't matter what's what the true uh, outcome is. But there are two 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 um, reasons that break the symmetry. First, 
um, I would argue um, that it's easier to co coordinate on, on the truth. That's kind of the natural the, the shelling point. Uh, and the second um, argument is, and that's, that's really only the, the credible threat, that's, that's nothing that I want to see, but that's something that, um, uh, yeah, the credible threat that, uh, that exists, that hopefully, um, because of its, ex its, ex its Exist. existence, it, uh, it's never used, the threat would be um, that you could fork Ethereum. So let's let's think it through. So in the extreme case of of um, someone is um, betting on, or is, lots of people are putting money on the wrong side, and then people so, are so money on the right side, and, and it completely escalates, and and then there are uh, of the 80 million ether, there are six, 70 million or something involved in this uh, dispute, and then finally the wrong side would win. And then the true side would have could say, OK, we just fork Ether, and we just um, start um, before this process began. And this is an option the, um, the, the uh, evil coalition does not have, because they, they cannot really say, OK, we tried to screw someone over. Uh, it doesn't work. We lost a lot of Ether. Now we fork it. Please join our fork. <laughs> So while the other side could say, could argue, okay, we want a honest kind of honest ether, um, yeah. yeah. So that, that's the reasoning behind it. So 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 basically, what you're saying is, if if there are two centralized oracles on the same um, that are putting information for the same event, and one of them says Hillary Clinton was elected president 2016, and the other mm -hmm. says no, she was not, I, then basically you have a betting game where mm -hmm. uh, ether holders can. Uh, this bet this ether idea. on one outcome or the other, right? And then whichever outcome gets most of the ether bet on it mm -hmm. wins. Mm -hmm. And uh, in in general, people are incentivized to uh, bet on the truth because they expect that to be mm -hmm. the winning outcome. It's it's slightly different. So you only need one centralized oracle in the first place, and it publishes re in result. And then there is um, and before. Uh, bets are resolved, and there is a dispute period of, let's say, five hours, or twelve hours, or twenty-four hours. And if during this um, uh, dispute period someone challenges the result and says, "Okay, that's not true," then he would need to to um, to uh, put a bounty or some, like something like five hundred ether or thousand ether to to trigger the ultimate oracle, and then it would be. Uh, triggered. Otherwise, just the solution of the uh, just the outcome of the centralized oracle would be taken. So, in in terms of the uh, in terms of the market maker technology, mm -hmm. are you using automated market makers? Yes, we do. We use the LMSR market maker, mm -hmm. and um, that's the standard that we use. But we right. also uh, use uh, offer the possibility to complete off chain trading. So uh, anyone can also become a market maker by offering odds for uh, for outcomes and markets and yeah so and it is modular as well so you can uh, use a different market maker algorithm that's also optional. Right. So I, I want a little bit to describe how, how it's modular. So you you have an event um, that's defined by somehow an event description and it's defined by who's uh, responsible to resolve it. And from this event, you can generate tokens. And those tokens um, can be traded with an automated market maker. And we have the option to just choose an algorithm or just, again, choose a contract. So it's, again, modular. And we have implemented one or two um, that can already be chosen. But you can create any market maker you want. Um, but you have also the option to just um, for example, send those shares because they they implement the the token interface. So you can just send them to someone and then kind of make over the counter trading, or you could use a decentralized exchange like EtherX, or um, well, there are different options. Yeah. Cool. So um, are markets already live on Group Gnosis, and what kind of markets are you seeing right now? Right. So it's 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 more experimental currently. Um, we had. Um, we, we are. I, I guess we are the, the most used Ethereum contract right now. <laughs> so uh, we have yeah, like uh, five, six hundred um, trades or transactions. Um, 
transactions a day no 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 in total so okay. <laughs> so that's uh, it, it's it's very in, in the beginning but um so currently it's it's stuff like um um ESA price or ESA bit uh, difficulty or some insights on uh, on the defcon here or something like that i i, I thought the coolest one you implemented was uh, how much how much repute, how much money was augur <laughs> going to raise in dollars <laughs> so, right. that was the perfect demonstration of group gnosis wasn't it yeah that was our sure. first, first market um, it was a pretty accurate forecast so <laughs> Now, uh, in terms um, in terms of building on top, like let's say um, let's say somebody uh, wants to. So, is Group Gnosis wanting to be the actual user interface to a prediction market, or are you trying to be more like the backend? Let me t let me take an example. Um, prediction markets could conceivably be used for sports betting, right? Because right. sports betting is a is a prediction sure, market. Sure. And sports betting is a huge uh, market around the world, and especially there are many countries that do not allow certain forms of it. And Ethereum could uh, conceivably uh, skirt through all of these regulations. Now, um, if if there are markets like these, is uh, Group Gnosis trying to be the backend for other people to build these kinds of applications, or are you actually trying to be the front end and uh, make these friendly for users? So the the ideas, the back end. We have to do it in any case, so that's what we build right now. But we want to, uh, like there was a talk today about the average user mm -hmm. and that we don't really know what the average user is, so everyone has a different opinion uh, on what the average user is. And um, that's why we want to try out different skins, so different front ends for our back end. And so we will um, start with uh, a skin called Hunch Game, mm -hmm. and that's uh, predictions about um, anything any gossips that are around and uh, celebrities celebrities everything in this area and um, yeah, we will try to to test out different skins and see what's possible but of course the back end is is there in any case and we are open for other people to build on top yeah the the ultimate goal would be that we have a bunch of of um, tools or of, of different um, front ends and um, that that it would be easy to to create your own front end and your own market for your topic but since it's all compatible in principle you could uh, also um, do the sports betting on a skin that's more oriented for financial markets or you so so it's all interchangeable um, but yeah it's 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 clearly very important or it, it is important that different topics will have just very different user interfaces. If um, if you do want to do something on sports betting, then you you mo most likely should should do the interfaces that people are used to if, if they are used to sport betting. Um, if you do something like the hunch game, that's more oriented uh, to a less very less technical uh, audience then you would have a very, very different um, uh, interface from, I mean, there, there's much more that prediction markets can do, like insurance contracts or um, forecasting under a specific condition. And obviously, that's a completely different uh, user interface compared to uh, will Kim Kardashian do this or that. So, <laughs> cool. so, uh, so finally, uh, one, of the, one of the interesting concerns regarding prediction markets is uh, Ethereum, as we know, is not a very scalable system, and uh, conserving gas and the amount of computations on the network is very important. And I've seen uh, posts from Group Gnosis uh, regarding off-chain methods to increase scalability in prediction markets. So um, perhaps you could tell us about some of these methods that you're thinking about? Sure, so um, we are implementing um, off-chain trading, so it, it, it has said basically uh, it's, it's similar to, to the Lightning Network approach. Um, so the general idea is that two users uh, lock up some money and say, or yeah, lock up some kind of asset, could, doesn't need to be Ether, it could be any kind of tokens, um, and then they, they uh, privately have a um, 
their own state, so they, they agree on a state, and only if, if there's a dispute, then the state is settled uh, on the chain. That's very powerful. You could even do predictions um, or markets. Even the market does not need to be on the on the Ethereum chain. Um, yeah, so you can run your whole uh, prediction market completely off chain, and it's still trustless. It's still it is instant. You have no transaction costs. The only thing, the only downside is that if you want to um, settle it, then then you have uh, um, you need some time to give the other one the chance to to make a different claim. So so basically, you are submitting the latest state, but who knows if it is the latest, so you have to give the other uh, part, your, your trading partner the chance to come up with a newer uh, state. If he comes up with a newer state, then you got punished because you tried to cheat. Um, but yeah, the, the incentives and the economics works in a way that no one is incentivized to cheat because he, he most likely would get punished. So the assumption is that he does not do it in the first place and everything works smooth. Yeah. So, um, so, so basically, what's what's happening uh, regarding this is um, that just as in as in, as in Bitcoin, you have uh, you have payments that can pl uh, take place off chain. On Ethereum, you have the possibility of whole computation mm -hmm. to take place off chain, right? And you're using these kinds of mechanisms where the computation happens on chain, but is finally settled on chain. Uh, as a way of scaling prediction market and also guaranteeing low latency in, 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 in trades, right? Yeah, it's just that the opportunity to settle it on-chain doesn't make it necessary to trade on-chain. So you can always trade off-chain and uh, if you think about uh, sport betting markets, you have so many events, so many bets that it will be just not feasible to do it on-chain. Cool. And how can our listeners discover more about Group Gnosis? What are the resources they could go to? So we are live, uh, groupgnosis.com. You can there try out the DEP. Um, the other bigger resource is we are quite open in our development. So we have a forum, forum.groupgnosis. And there we discuss what's uh, going on and what are the latest development steps. And that's a good way to, to uh, get in touch or see the latest progress. Cool. So that's it from the Group Gnosis team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.